All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Blast podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. Today, I have Linda Sunshine West with us. She is a best-selling author, motivational speaker, and founder of Living Live, Inc., where she helps women entrepreneurs discover their value and share their voice with the world. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Of course. Grateful to have you on. So the first one we ask on this show, Linda, is what is the best story from your life that has an underlying valuable message? Oh, well, I would say that that was the moment that I actually discovered that I had value because it was that moment that I discovered that I had value, that I knew that I needed to start speaking. So I grew up in a very alcoholic, uh, abusive alcoholic household. And so it kind of stifled my voice and, you know, kids are better seen than heard. Like a lot of us have heard that kind of stuff. So I actually um, was stifled until I was about 51 years old when I met a life coach who helped me kind of unlock some things in my mind to realize that I wasn't as stupid as I thought I was. I wasn't as ignorant as I was told I was and all these things. And so I like the story is I was sitting in a conference conference room. There were about 14 women in this conference room. It was a workshop this woman was putting on. And she asked a question and I raised my hand, which I had never done in my life. You know, so I'm 51. I raised my hand and I said whatever it was I said. And I sat down and the two women sitting next to me, both of them said, that was brilliant. Can you repeat it? I want to write it down. And it was the exact moment that I actually, I, I repeated it to them. I don't even know what it was. I don't remember that. But then I looked up at this, like the, the lighting fixtures that were up in the room and I looked up there and I just said to myself, I have value. And I'm actually getting chills right now, remembering that moment. I have value. It's time for me to start sharing my voice as often as possible. And mm -hmm. I started right in that moment. Like that's when I started doing interviews and, and stuff like this. And so it's been amazing, you know? Yeah. No, it's great to hear that. And also not to make a joke out of any of this, but I think maybe our audience would want to know about your anti-aging uh, stuff. You do not look over 51 oh. <laughs> at all. Oh. I was like, I don't sell anti-aging. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you. I, yeah, I don't know what, when you well, I'm said gonna be 56. That, I'll be 56 uh, next month. So okay, in, well, in March. So whatever you're doing. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> thank you. Um, so next one I got for you, um, and thanks for sharing this story with us, um, is what is the most valuable piece of information that we should know that's within your expertise or industry? Mm, I would say uh, facing fears and overcoming them. It was it, you know, after I hired my life coach, and I started on this journey of, of like self-discovery, who am I and all this stuff. It was 2015, January 1st. I woke up that morning. And I said, I got to do something different with my life. I don't know what it is, but let me see if I can figure it out. Well, I realized that I had so many fears and that's why I had you know, been stifled for, for decades, decades, five decades. Right. And so I had so many fears and I decided I was going to face a fear every single single day of that year of 2015. And so I did. And I love to invite people to, to try this, not for a whole year, but maybe you do once a week or once a month or, or do it for seven days just to challenge yourself to ask yourself this question, what scares me? And whatever is the very first thing that came up for me was the thing I committed myself to doing that particular day. I had to do it no matter what. And um, I didn't jump out of any planes. I didn't need any bugs or anything like that, you know, but mine was more, it was, there was so much in here in my heart. Like I just had to learn how to, to grow and express myself and, and not be so scared of so many things. And so the growth that I went through was, it was immense on a weekly basis. People were saying, what are you doing? Like you're a totally different person than you were last week. And yeah. so it gave me so much confidence to do the things that I had previously been you know, like absolutely terrified to do. So my advice would be, you know, face those fears and realize that the growth is on the other side. You can stifle and you can keep letting yourself be pushed down or you can grow. It's up to you. Yeah. And it's fears are really all in your head. I think like we can like, in our mind, we, we tend to make something like way worse than it actually is. Like it, we, cause we let our mind run. So like public speaking, for instance, that's something that I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. Um, like getting in front of a crowd, like you overthink it. You almost have like a panic attack, right? At least I, I would. 
And then after I did it a few times, though, those first few times were like really scary. And now it's almost like a, it's a momentum thing. Like I almost enjoy the rush. Like it's more of like a game, like it's fun. Um, so either way, just I'm, I'm bringing it up because it seems to me it's always in the beginning before you do something. When it's in your head, you play out all the possible failures. Yes. And it gets so big and you're so scared. And then when you actually do it and then afterward you sit down after that talk in front of 100 people and you're like, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> like that mm-hmm. was nothing. Like, so I don't know. I think our mind makes things worse than it, it really is. Yeah, and that's actually, I got a great, great piece of advice from Mr. Les Brown. You know, he's international motivational speaker. And he mm-hmm. was like, let, Linda, don't let what you want to say get in the way of what the audience needs to hear. And I was like, oh my God, I was so in my head thinking about what are they going to think of me? What if I don't say this right? Instead of thinking about there's somebody out there who needs to hear my message and that there's somebody mm-hmm. out there that today I'm going to say something that's going to change their life. And that totally put me into their seat instead of my seat. And it changed the way when I speak on stage, it totally changed the way I speak. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we need to get out of our own way uh, to be able to do it. So next one I got for you, what is your best piece of overall business advice? So not necessarily industry specific. Yeah, this would be, uh, these are great questions, by the way. Um, (laughs) And I love these because, you know, my, my advice is, as my mentor tells me, seek counsel, not opinion, because oftentimes we'll ask people things in our life and they don't have any idea what we're doing, especially as entrepreneurs, you know, we're surrounded by people who don't understand what we're doing, you know, on our, in our families, our friends and what have you. So to be surrounded by other entrepreneurs is key, but it really, it's key to be surrounded by those who are doing successfully what you want to do so that you're here, they're here and you're like, Hey, can you help me get here? And then they're Mm -hmm. going to shoot you straight up instead of you going like this, you know, so seek counsel, not opinion opinions. There's a ton of them out there and a lot of them are wrong. So (laughs) wasting your time. I've spent a lot of time wasting my time asking opinions rather than seeking counsel. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's huge. Um, so the next one I got, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? Well, yeah. Okay. When I was five years old, Mm -hmm. I ran away. Like a lot of kids run away. I was gone for an entire week and five. Yeah. Five years old. I, I, you know, I look back, I was like, why did I run away? Actually, Les Brown asked me, why did you run away that day? And I was like, it was just so bad. I decided I didn't want to live there ever again. And so I, I ran away. I was only at the neighbors, but for five, like I was gone for a whole week. So my advice would be to have stayed away. I came back because my mom made me. Where now for that week, where, where did you go? Yeah, I was just at the neighbor's house. <laughs> okay, that's good. I was like, how did she feed herself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, they took care of me. I had a blast. You know, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was like a little I, vacation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would have moved with them. You know, they moved like a couple years later. I totally would have just gone with yeah. them and started a whole new life. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I got you. Um, so I think that it probably leads into our next one. So, you know, this podcast is about business and things of that nature, but I think like life and business are intertwined. So I like to ask in your opinion, what is the key to happiness? To discover who you are and live your life as that person. It took me mm-hmm. a while to actually discover who I was. Cause you know, when, you know, growing up in that, uh, that abusive household, then I, unfortunately my first marriage was someone just like my dad. And so I was a people pleaser. I became a people pleaser and I call myself a chameleon because I would just adjust to whoever I was with. And so yeah, if yeah. they liked it, I liked it. If they hated it, I hated it. If they liked it, I liked it. If they hated it, I just became this like puppet, you know, for other people. And so once my life coach helped me to unlock that and discover who is Linda, what does Linda actually like? And then I started living my life doing those things. It's like pure bliss. There's nothing like living your life on purpose the way you want. There's nothing yeah. like it. No, absolutely. So to dive a little deeper there, how do you think you discover who you are? Do you have any like tips for that? Yes, I think my, that's really hard for a lot of people. Yeah. And so my life coach actually gave me some great exercises to do. And one of them that I think was probably my, my favorite one that really helped me discover this. She said, she said, make a list of everything that you absolutely love doing. So whether you're thinking about it, whether you're doing it, 
or after you've already done it and you're like, oh my God, that was so awesome. I loved it. So it could be you know, like speaking on stage. You might enjoy that, you know, or walking, taking your dog for a walk. Maybe it's riding bikes and you're not doing that. Like the bike is, you know, has cobwebs on it, right? Or you're, you're not taking the dog out for the walk. It's, it's like writing that list of all those things you absolutely love doing. And then I took it one step further. I wrote my list and then I said, you know what, for five minutes every day, I'm going to do one of these things on my list. And I did that for a week. The next week I said for 10 minutes every day, I'm going to do at least one of these things on my list. And I increased it week after week after week by five minute increments. That way it was easy. It was palatable. So now I would say probably I spend, I want to say anywhere about 80 to 85% of my life is doing things that I absolutely love doing. Yeah. If there are things as business, if there are things that you have to do in business that you don't love doing, delegate it out to somebody who actually loves doing that. Yeah. And it's strange. Like, cause other people might like it. Like for somebody like me, like accounting, I absolutely do not understand how anybody could enjoy that. But my dad <laughs> is actually an, an accountant and he enjoys like parts of it. He enjoys crunching numbers. Like mm -hmm. he actually likes it. <laughs> so it's like, exactly. it's, he, those people are out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whether you think they're out there or not, they are out there. <laughs> yeah. So no, that's a great point. I think just time, some time for like self-reflection. We all yeah. get caught up in our routines. We never just like sit back and reflect on like, what do I actually want to be doing? Not mm -hmm. what am I like, feel like I'm being forced to do. Yes. Um, so my next one for you, what is the best book that you've read and what's the number one thing you learned from it? Um, by far, uh, well, you know, read Think and Grow Rich, was, which is amazing, uh, which was really actually hard for me to read the original book, but the Think and Grow Rich for Women was a much easier book for me to read. But my number one book is Three Feet from Gold, and that's by Greg Reed and Sharon Lecter. Absolutely amazing book. Like, what's the one thing? Oh, the one thing is like the, the point of the whole book is that you could be stopping three feet from gold. And that's why you need to keep moving forward. And like, that was the biggest point of the whole book. And I realized there were so many things that I would like, I get all excited and I'm going and going and going, I move forward and then I get that brick wall and I would stop and say, oh, this probably isn't right for me. Instead of saying, let me figure out how to break through that or find counsel who can help me break through that. And so that book really put me on that trajectory of you know doing more and challenging myself to keep, just keep going. It's been amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check it out. I haven't heard of that one before. So I have to look into that awesome. one. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm always down for another book. I'm, cool. uh, I love, yeah, love books. <laughs> uh, so the next one is what's your favorite quote and why? My favorite quote is one that I actually made up myself uh, during this, this last, it's been like four and a half years of my personal development journey. And that is to be brave and share your weaknesses for in your weaknesses, others see your strengths. And what that quote means is that like for me, at least I had so many, what I believed were weaknesses. And then once I started sharing on, you know, on Facebook, on Facebook lives, you know, those weaknesses, people are like, Oh my God, you're so brave. You're so strong. How can you share that? I would never do that. And I saw that like, whoa, here I'm sharing something that to me is a tremendous weakness. And they're like, you're so strong. And I was like, whoa, yeah. I'm going to start sharing my weaknesses because other people see those as strengths. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's really, really good advice. And I think, are you familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. So he, he kind of talks about like documenting over creating and that, that really stuck with me in a way of like, not always trying to perfect everything you put out into the world, but rather what people want to see is your true authentic self. Mm -hmm. you know, instead, like you're saying, just document, like if you're going to do a vlog or something, just document everything about your life. Don't just make it a highlight reel. People want to see the journeys, the failures, the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what you're kind of you know, alluding to. So um, right. yeah, I think that's incredible advice. Um, thank you. So yeah, thank you for coming on. The last one I got for you, where can our listeners best uh, connect with you online? And, and find Oh, you froze there a second. So are you back? Okay. You're back. Okay. Oh, 
Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. So uh, where can our listeners best find Joe online? I'm at livingliveinc.com. And then also on Facebook, you know, facebook.com slash livingliveinc, I-N-C. Okay, perfect. Thank you again for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You have a great day. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.